All right, guys, here we are in round two of Cool Tools for Lock Sporters. You made the suggestions, I grabbed them, and now let's talk about how they work. All right, guys, here are four tools that several of you recommended after I did the last Cool Tools for Lock Sporters. And I guess we're going to start from probably the simplest tool of all. This is just a flat piece of steel. But on the front here, you'll notice the tip. It's a very precisely measured gap. Over here, we have a little groove, and then the other side is rounded off. Just a flat piece of soft steel. And I wish I'd known about this tool a long time ago. I could have saved myself a lot of pain and injury to my hands. This is a circlip remover. And again, very precisely cut. You take the rounded edge and just place it up against the side of the circlip. And you take that little groove right there and you place it on the other side of the circlip. And then you basically roll the pin off of the lock. That is how easy it is. It's a lot easier than trying to get a screwdriver or a, a probe or a pocket knife or something to wedge at and ultimately end up stabbing yourself in the hand. So very cool little circlip removal tool. This sells for, I think it was $9.50. That would have been a cheap price to pay based on all the hand injuries I've had over the years. This next one is a pair of tweezers that works precisely opposite of what I'm used to, but a lot of you guys swear by these. This is what's called a reverse action tweezer. In other words, when you squeeze them open, it actually opens them up. Uh, some of you guys have just learned to really like these because without any effort on your part, it holds that pin. So you can actually... When you're ready to pin up a lock, you can actually hold the cylinder. You can set that aside, throw it over there just like that. And you'll notice it held onto that pin pretty securely. Didn't drop it out of there. And then when you're ready, you can reach down, grab your preloaded tweezer, align it on the groove. And as soon as you squeeze on the tweezer, then the pin will fall out and you can release it into the chamber. So again, it's the opposite of what I'm used to. It takes some adjusting because I'm used to the other style. But I like the fact that you can maintain positive control of this pin. Grab it out of my, between my fingers there. And even if you drop your tweezers, you don't lose that pin. That would have saved me countless numbers of pins. Again, this sells from lockpick, lockpicks.com, and I think it was $7.95. So even if you buy it and try it and you end up you don't like it, you don't have a, a house payment invested in it. This next one's also a pair of tweezers, but this one is kind of odd. Again, a lot of you guys swear by this one, particularly locksmiths. Uh, it's a traditional pair of pinning tweezers. So let's drop that pin. We can grab him. So again, we maintain positive control. And this is called a top loader tweezer. Now you notice that little plunger on the top. When you push down with your finger, it lines up. Grab him again. It lines up with the top of that pin. So maintain positive control, you align it with the chamber inside of the lock, and then loosen up slightly with the tweezer, and you can use that top to push him down inside of the chamber, and then you can extract your tweezers and then slide your, your uh, core forward to hold that pin in place. I know that's a little difficult to imagine me showing it like that, so let me go ahead and grab, I guess I'll grab that clear lock so you can see through the side of it, and I'll demonstrate how this is used. I actually do like this. Maintaining positive control of that pin. So let's, let me set it up and see what we got. All right, hopefully this camera will stay focused so we can show you what's supposed to happen here. Notice I'm trying to pin up that last chamber. The spring is already in place, and the pin that I'm going to use for the driver pin is already in the tweezers. I'm going to slide it in there and then just line him up with the hole and then use that plunger to push him against the, the spring tension, and I'll hold him in place. And then I'll begin to slide the core forward, and it'll push that prong right out of the way. And that is how easy it is to repin under positive control. No springing, shooting pins flying all over the lock lab. All you need is one of these guys. This is the top loader tweezers. It's a lot cheaper than a new pair of glasses. $24.19. All right, guys, before we start talking about the digital caliper that you asked me to take a look at, I'd like to review a... Uh, another one is quite a bit more expensive. This is a name brand. This is a Midutoyo, and this is a 6-inch caliper, where this one is a 4-inch. But for lock sporters, probably smaller is more appropriate. Let's look at what we get here, at least on this Midutoyo. Well, we have an, we got an on-off button. And then whenever I turn him on, I want to make sure this is 
perfectly together, and then I'll hit the zero button so I, kn I know exactly what I'm starting with. Once I'm there, I'll grab the object that I want to measure the thickness of, slide them in there, and you see we got eh, right at 47 thousandths of an inch. If I want to know how many millimeters, there's a millimeter inch button conversion here. I just push that button and it's 1.2 millimeters. Pretty cool. But what if I want to know the thickness between this tension wrench and say this clip removal tool? Easy. I measure them 1.2 and then I hit the zero button. Zero, zero, come on. Zero. There we go. Now I can open this up, discard that, grab the clip removal tool. Clip onto him, and you can see that the clip removal tool is 0.26 millimeters smaller. We got a minus sign smaller than that tension wrench, or that works out to about 10, 000, 10 thousandths of an inch. So, very, very cool, very expensive tool. On this guy, this is $18.90, less than one tenth of the cost of that Mitotoyo. What do we get? Well, we got an on off button. We can, and again, we have a zero button, so we know exactly where we're starting. And we can go ahead and measure this guy. Get in position about the same place. So we're looking at 47 and a half thousand, 48 thousandths of an inch. And that is the same as 1.21 millimeters. So pretty cool. I also want to know the difference in thickness. And we'll do that same exercise again. I push my zero button right here, get rid of that tool, slide this one back up here. Get him centered there, and you can see got 11.5 thousandths of an inch, or 0.29 millimeters smaller. So for for one tenth of the cost, we had almost exactly the same level of precision as as this Mitotoyo. Four. This is a four inch digital caliper. There's a lot of other uses for this in lock sport, and rather than leave it hanging right here, let me show you some of the other things I use a digital caliper for. One of the most common uses that I find for my digital caliper uh, is measuring thicknesses of different picks. So just set your caliper to zero, zero it out, grab your pick, slide it in there, and 25,000. This is a Sparrows hybrid, so we know they use 25,000 stainless steel, so that was right on the money. That's interesting, but let's look at something a little bit more complex. Let's look at decoding locks. Now, when we have a key, we grab us one of these little tools. These are very common. This one is by Sparrows, and there are five different scales here. A couple of disadvantages to something like this. First of all, there's probably 20 or 25 different lock manufacturers, only five of them represented here. The other disadvantage is a lot of guys don't pay a lot of attention, and they, they slide it into the wrong scale. So we have a Schlage key. We want to make sure we choose the Schlage scale, because if you choose any of these other scales, if you take a Schlage key and put it in master, you're not going to get the right answer. So when we decode a key, this is how we do it. We slide it in there, slide it all the way over until it stops, and you can see that guy stopped on, what is that, a 7 cut, on the Schlage scale with the Schlage key. But as lock sporters, we don't often have keys. All we have are the pins, and here's one, that we just took out of a lock that we picked. Now, the Europeans is all, have always had an elegant solution for this because they do it all the time. They've created things like this. Again, this one's by Multipick. And I don't know if the light's just right, but you can see there's an angled scale machined into the face of this aluminum tool. All we do, we take our pin. Now, this is for Abus, not, not uh, Schlage, but I think you get the idea. And we slide it in like so until it stops, and you can see... Well, if that were an Abus, that'd be about a 4.4 cut, which no such thing, but I think you get the idea. If we had one of these for Schlage, it would be very easy, but, you know, we don't. All we have is a dial caliper. So let's take our caliper. All right, so we pull him up. We zero him. We grab our pin. Let me grab him in these tweezers. be a little bit easier. And then we measure the length of the pin that we've just taken out of our lock. And it looks like... 0.27 or uh, uh, inches, or, and again, we want to know millimeters, 6.86 millimeters is the length of the pin that we took out of a particular chamber in our lock. That doesn't tell us a whole lot. We really want to know the cut of that particular pin. In order to get that, we either have to go to the internet and look up the numbers to, uh, for Schlage, or we have to have a pinning kit. I happen to have one. Let me show you what you look up. 
When I open up the lid of my pinning kit, this is what you find pasted inside of the cover. It's a, a lot of the major manufacturers. I think there's like 20 of them here. Everything from Aero, we got Corbin, we got Ilco, Sargents, all the way down alphabetically to Wives, the Yales. Schlegs are located right here. Let's go ahead and zoom in on that chart so I can show you what it is that we found out so far. On the Schlage scale, you'll notice that we have code numbers. There's a column for code numbers. And if you go down to a 7, you'll see that the cut number 7, which we measured on that punch gauge, is equal to a, a bottom pin or a key pin length of 0.27, which is what we measured using the dial caliper. What a great way to decode a lock. So all we need to do is measure all the bottom pins or all the key pins out of a lock that we've just picked. That'll tell us the length of the pins. It makes it easy to figure out what the code number is to put into a code cutting machine to cut ourselves a brand new key for that lock. What a great deal. So the beauty of having a digital caliper is that we don't need no stinking key. All we do is measure the length of the key pins, look it up on the charts, and cut ourselves a new key. How great is that? All right, guys, I hope I've convinced you how incredibly versatile a digital caliper can be to have on your workbench for lock sporters. So for this week's giveaway, of course, I'm going to give away the digital caliper. I'm also going to throw in everything that we've talked about so far, the clip removal tool, the reverse action tweezers, and the top loading tweezers. I'll put links for all this stuff down in the description. But to sweeten up this week's giveaway just a little bit more, I thought I'd throw in some more stuff. Uh, I have one of these guys. This is one of the Bamboo Lock Lab experimental pinning trays that I put together a while back. And I throw that in to get it out of here, as well as a brand new Sparrows Scarab set. And lastly, throw in a Polaris kit from UK Bump Keys. Brand new, beautiful set of rakes. Anyway, guys, I appreciate your time. Oh, you want to win it? Easy. There's a website. Go there in the middle of the page is a purple button that says Weekend Review Giveaway. Click it, register, with a little bit of luck, you'll be walking away with this haul next week. Appreciate your time, guys. Stay safe, stay legal. I've produced over 200 videos a year for the last several years and would really appreciate your support. All I'm asking is you subscribe, click on the like button for each video, and share them on social media. That's it. Thanks, guys.